Welcome to Lesson 17 of Hebrew 1 and 2, Bright Old Testament 502-504. Today we'll be moving on to the Hiphil stem, so let's dive in. As we did last time, and will continue to do in future lessons, I'm going to allow you to do certain sections of exercises on your own, because you're simply identifying the markers of a particular stem. I will walk you through some examples from some of the actual parsing exercises, but the other ones you can check your work on your own. So let's begin here with this particular section, which is section two of chapter 26 of your workbook. How exactly do we parse these particular words? Let's start with number one. Number one is a Hifil perfect 1CS. You can see the 1CS, the Tav plus the Hiric Yod at the end of the verb. You can also see the Hifil plus the Hiric at the beginning of the verb. You'll notice that there is no Dagesh in the Shin, and there's also not a Kametz under the Shin. So this is nothing in the Nifil class of verbs. This is a Hifil perfect 1CS. What about number four? Number four is a hifil infinitive construct. You should know that immediately because of the Lamed preposition at the front, which is an indication that this is an infinitive construct in almost every case. You also have the hifil with the vowel underneath and a hiric yod in between the mem and the dalet. So this tells us this is a hifil infinitive construct. How about number five? Number five is not one of your assigned words, but it is important because of the unique form. So how would you parse number five? Number five is a hifil imperative. You can notice the hifil is indicated by the he plus the patak. Patak is going to become the key vowel in the future parts of this verb, like the imperative, the infinitive construct, and the imperfect. You'll also notice that there is nothing under the shin other than a schwa. There is no comets, so this is not a nifal. There's also no dogesh in the shin. And we have the long I-class vowel, a sere, underneath the mem. All of these are characteristics of the hifil. What about number seven? Number seven is a hifil imperfect. Uh, this is a vayak toll. We have the vav conjunction on the front that is actually converting it. Sometimes it's called the vav conversive because of that. So even though it's an imperfect, instead of translating it as a future, we'll usually translate it as a past. We see the hiric yod in the middle, which is a dead giveaway that this is a hifil. And again, you have the patak under the preformative yod. The shurik at the end indicates that this is a third masculine plural. Let's move on to number nine. Again, not one that you were assigned to do, but the fact that it is important is why I picked it. Number nine is a hifil participle. You can see the hiric yod mem at the end of the verb. That is a giveaway for the fact that we're dealing with a masculine plural participle. We also have a mem at the front, which also indicates that this is a participle. This mem is going to be an indication of a participle, and it's the vowel underneath the mem that's important. Here, it's a patak, which again is going to be the giveaway of the hifil outside of the perfect. You're going to see other things underneath the mem in the weeks to come because of the fact that we have other verb stems that will also use a mem, but their vowel underneath the mem will be different. We still have the hiric yod in the middle of the stem that again confirms the fact that this is a hifil. What about number 10? Number 10 is a very straightforward hifil imperfect, one CP. The hiric yod in the middle of the stem gives away that it's a hifil. We have the preformative here, which is an aleph, because of the fact that this is a first-person imperfect. The aleph is key to that. Uh, we also have the patak underneath the aleph, which again confirms that this is indeed a hifil. What about number 13? Number 13 is also a hifil imperfect, second masculine plural, identical to number 10 in terms of the stem where you have a preformative with a patak underneath, because it's imperfect, and again, the hiric yod in the middle. We have the shurik at the end, which tells us that in combination with the tav preformative, this is a second masculine plural. What about number 16?
Number 16 is a hifil imperfect. We see the tav plus the patak as our preformative, again an indication of the hifil. The tav plus the na at the end tells us this is third feminine plural or second feminine plural. We don't have a heric yod in the middle of the stem, but we do have the long I-class vowel, the seire. And here we have, again, the emphasis on this middle syllable instead of at the end, because the nun plus the comets he is not strong enough to draw that accent. What about number 19? Number 19 is also a hyphial imperfect, 1cs, with the aleph preformative. Again, the accent is on the middle. We have the heric yod that indicates that it's a hyphil as well. The comet's hey at the end is a accusative ending. This would be the object. I hid it. So that is not part of the verb stem per se. It is actually an object marker. Number 21 is also not one that you had to do, but again, I think it's important, so I've included it here. How do you parse number 21? Number 21 is a hyphil participle feminine plural, hence the oat at the end. Again, we have the mem plus the patak at the beginning, indicating that this is indeed a participle. The heric yod in the middle confirms the patak underneath the mem indicates that it is a hyphil. Again, hyphil participle feminine plural. What about number 22? Twenty-two is a trick question just to make sure that you weren't sleeping. We see the oat at the end, which, because this is a third hey verb from Allah, indicates this is automatically an infinitive construct. We then have to ask, what kind of infinitive construct? Well, there's nothing else going on, so this is automatically a cal infinitive construct thrown in here in a list of hyphials just to make sure you don't get comfortable. Last but not least, what about number twenty-five? Number 25 is a hyphil imperfect as well, a 3ms from shalak, meaning to throw or to toss. We know that this is a hyphil because we have the patak underneath the yod. We also have the seire underneath the lamed, again, the long I-class vowel. Well, let's move on to our next set of exercises. This next set of exercises is translation, so go ahead and translate number one. Number one begins with a pronoun, with a subject fronted for emphasis, who, as in who is he, he is she, me is who, this is who, so this is he, followed by yashmid, which you notice the patak under the yod, that's a dead giveaway that this is a hyphil, so he will destroy, normally we think of the hyphil as causative, but in this particular stem it's simply destroy, followed by the direct object marker, and the plural Mitzbeach, which is here mitzbachot, the altars. And we have a construct phrase, the altars of the kings, followed by a adjective, harashaim, the wicked kings. Notice that rashaim is definite, as is the kings. So this is, he will destroy the altars of the kings, the wicked ones. Let's try number four. Number four begins with the direct object marker, fronting the direct object for emphasis. We have enemies, enemies of the people. Ove is enemies, plural construct, masculine plural. Ha'am is definite, so it's the enemies of the people, followed by a hyphil perfect, they destroyed. You see the shurik at the end to indicate that it's third person, masculine plural, and the hyphil plus the hyric, plus the hyric yod under the mem, indicating this is a hyphil perfect. They destroyed the enemies of the people. Let's try the next one. Number seven begins with a vob consecutive, which in some ways changes the tense of this particular verb. It's an imperfect, but we translate it as a perfect, as though it's past tense. They magnified, third masculine plural hyphil. You see the heric yod with the dalit, as well as the patak under the yod and then you see the shurik at the end of the verb. So the yod and the shurik together tells us that this is 3MP. We have the direct object marker, et, and then sham, 
uh, your name, and then HaKodesh, uh, your holy name. Uh, the cough on your name does not show up on this particular screen, but it is still there. Your name, your holy name, they magnified. Let's go on to the last one, number 10. This last sentence is fairly tricky. We have two verbs, actually three verbs, because of the last verb. The first one is a vav consecutive on haya. Haya is a cow perfect, although we probably translate it as an imperfect because of the vav consecutive, and it will be. And then we have a bait prefix on the next verb, which like the lamed prefix tells us that this is a hifil infinitive construct. We have the patak under the hay and the hirik yod with the kaf that tells us that this is a hifil. The 3ms object ending is actually possessive, and it will be at his remembering, would be more literal. We then have a direct object marker of what it is that he is remembering, et divre, the words of hasefer, the book, and then another vav consecutive, and samhak, and he will rejoice. This is a vav consecutive that goes with the first vav consecutive, so we translate both of these more as a future idea when he remembers, or it will be when he remembers the words of the book, he will rejoice. We now turn to workbook exercise 27, and looking at these weak verbs, how exactly do we parse these? Beginning with number one, how do we parse number one? Number one is a hifil imperfect third masculine plural. What makes this one weak is the fact that we have an ayin, or a guttural, in the first position. So instead of a simple schwa, it's a compound schwa. Again, we have the yod and the shurik to tell us that this is 3mp, but other than that, it's just your typical hifil. What about number four? Number four is just like number one, except that we have a tav prefix instead of a yod prefix. So instead of a 3mp, this is a 2mp, Again, with the shurik at the end, we still have the patak under the tav, and we have the compound shva instead of the simple shva underneath the ayin. What about number seven? Number seven is also pretty straightforward with the tav prefix with the patak to tell us that this is a hifiel. We have the seire under the lamid, which confirms it's a hifiel. We have na at the end which tells us that this is 3FP, 2FP from Shalak. What about number 10? Number 10 starts with a hay plus a patak, so that we know that this is a hifiel. Again, we have the say right under the lama that confirms that. However, as we look at this particular word, we'll notice that there is nothing else going on. So how do we explain this? Well, there are two options. One is that this is a hifiel infinitive absolute, or this is a hifil imperative 2ms. They will have the same form. Once the tav drops from the beginning of this verb and we add in the hey, it looks just like an infinitive. Let's move on now to number 13. The mem prefix indicates that this is a participle. The mem plus the patak tells us that it's a hifil participle with the hirik yod after the tzade as confirmation. The oat ending tells us that this is feminine plural. What about number 16? Number 16 is fairly straightforward once you stop and think about it, but at first glance it is anything but. We know that it's a hifil because we have a hirik and a hay as the prefix. We know that it's 1cs because we have tav plus a hirik yod. It's the gimel in the middle that throws us because it has a dagesh. We would not expect a dagesh after a short vowel. In fact, we would actually expect the gimel to be closing that first syllable. Instead, we see the gimel combined with an ayin with a simple schwa, which is unexpected since ayin usually takes a compound schwa. So this could either be gimel ayin hey, or, as is probably the case, a nun plus a gimel plus an ayin, where the nun has assimilated into the gimel. We look at this form, and we can certainly tell that it's a hifil perfect 1cs. The tricky part is trying to decide what root it's from. And here we've decided that it is naga, to strike or to hit. What about number 19?
Number 19 begins with a yod with a hyric, which might make us think that this is an imperfect. However, if this is a hyphial imperfect, we would see yod plus a patak. Instead, here we see yod plus a hyric, and immediately after, in the next consonant, we see a comets. The combination of hyric plus a comets tells us this is a nifal imperfect. It is a nifal imperfect 3ms from bana to build. How about number 22? Number 22 starts with a he plus a patak, which should clue us in that we're dealing either with a hyphil imperative or a hyphil infinitive. We would have hyric plus a he if it was perfect. We would have a preformative plus patak if it was imperfect. He is not a imperfect preformative. The na at the end tells us that we're dealing with 2fp or 3fp, which would lead us to conclude that there should be a tav at the front. The fact that the tav has dropped out and been supplied by a he means this is an imperative form. What about number 25? Number 25 starts with a he plus a hyric, which tells us we're dealing with a hyphil perfect. We have the shurik at the end for the 3cp. We notice the hyric yod after the tate, which tells us that the stem is bait, tate, chait, or batach, so that we know that this is a hyphil perfect 3cp from batach to test, to try, to trust. Number 28 looks at first glance like a cow perfect 3MP, since we have what appears to be a perfect ending. However, as we look at this, we'll notice that there is a yod plus a seire. Yod plus a seire is not a perfect, because perfect would be yod plus a comets, or yod plus a patak. It's imperfect, because we have a yod, which is the only other time we get a yod at the beginning of a verb. It's not a hyphil because it's not yod plus a patak, and it's not nifal because it's not yod plus a seire or hyric plus shin plus a comets. Instead, the shin has a simple schwa. So we're left with the cal stem. How did we get the seire underneath the yod? Well, the answer is that we had two yods, one yod for the stem, one yod from the prefix. Those two yods combine, and you end up with seire. So this is yod se re shin bait plus the 3MP marker. So again, this is a cal imperfect, not a cal perfect, not a hyphil imperfect, but cal imperfect from yeshav. Well, that brings us to the end of our workbook exercises. Go ahead and take a look at the rest of them if you want to get additional practice, and I'll see you in the next lesson.